Hello all, I am Dia Chavla. I did my master's from Ames, Delhi. I did my bachelor's from University of Delhi. I have qualified CSIR net and several other national entrance examinations, for example, IIT JAM, GATE exam, and also Ames PG for biochemistry. I was all India ranked three in that. So today we're going to discuss about biomolecules. And most importantly, our topic today will be amino acids. So biomolecules are the most important components of our biology as the name itself suggests biomolecule. Bio means life. Molecule that sustains life is known as your biomolecule. It's the most important part of our biochemistry which makes the core of your whole biology. For example, biomolecule, if I, we talk about the genome, the DNA, it is made up of nucleotides, which is nothing but our biomolecule. We talk about the energy, which the energy that we are producing from glucose. Glucose in itself is a carbohydrate, which is a biomolecule. All right. When we talk about the membranes of our cell, it is made up of lipids. Lipids are in itself a biomolecule. So if we talk about the structure of biomolecules, the common thing that we see that they are made up of five major elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So today we are going to talk about a biomolecule that is, that is known as amino acids. As we all know that proteins are very important for the phenotypic expression of our body. They make up all the enzymes of the body, the eye color that we have, the height that we have, the body stature that we have, it's all because of proteins, right? And proteins are made up of the monomeric units called amino acids. So today, our topic of discussion will be amino acids. We'll discuss about standard amino acids, non-standard amino acids. We'll discuss about the titration curve of amino acids, etc., etc. So let's begin with the topic. So amino acids are the monomeric units that make up our proteins, all right? So what are alpha amino acids and why have I written alpha amino acids? So if we see the structure of amino acids, then we can write it as there is a H hydrogen atom, there is a side chain that is R group, there is a NH3 positive molecule and there is a COO, there is an acidic molecule, acid moiety in this structure, all right? So it's an amino acid. So of course the acid group will be there and we call it as alpha amino acid. So the functional group, acid group is joined to the alpha carbon as we all know that this carbon will be alpha carbon and the amino group is joined to the alpha carbon of our structure. So we can say that this is an alpha amino acid, okay? So now we're going to discuss about different kinds of amino acids. Now amino acids are divided into several, uh, uh, you know, on a basis of several criteria, on the basis of several categories. For example, the most important ones are standard amino acids and non-standard amino acids. Now standard amino acids and non-standard amino acids Standard amino acids are the ones that are ribosomically incorporated into the proteins in your body. So when we talk about the process called translation in our body. So what happens is our genome is responsible for all the phenotypic expression that happens in our body. The genome, the DNA is transcribed into mRNA. Then this mRNA carries the information that helps in the translation of proteins. Now this translation of proteins occurs on your ER surface. That is your RER, right? Suppose we draw the structure of this RER. We have ribosomes on the RER, all right? So our mRNA sits on the ribosome and our protein is formed on the ribosomes, right? So if the protein is formed, it is entering into the ER. Now, how? what is the process of protein formation? The amino acids are being added to the structure and they're forming the protein. As I told you already that, you know, the monomeric unit of your proteins is amino acids. So what are these standard amino acids? Standard amino acids are the ones, I hope you're clear with these uh, short terms like standard is STD amino acids, we can say as AA, right? So standard amino acids are the ones that are ribosomically incorporated into your proteins and non-standard amino acids are the ones that are not ribosomically incorporated. They are not really present in the proteins, but there are certain exceptions to that. They are present in some other organisms in their proteins, all right? Now we're going to talk about these 22 standard amino acids in detail, all right? So first of all, if I want to divide the amino acids on the basis of certain criteria, I would divide them on the basis of their requirements in our, in our diet. So first of all, we have essential amino acid and non-essential amino acids. Essential amino acids are the one that you require to take in your diet. You have to eat it in the form of your protein in your diet. Non-essential amino acids are the amino acids that are being made in your body in certain metabolic reactions. So we have essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. Now the most important criteria on which we divide the amino acid that is our standard and non-standard amino acids. As I've already told you what are standard and non-standard amino acids. Standard amino acids are 22 in number. 
but almost there are like more than 300 amino acids that exist in nature but not all of them are standard right so 22 amino acids earlier there were just 20 amino acids there have been new additions to that there is 21st amino acid which is coded by the stop codon of your genome that is uh, UGA and that codes for selenocysteine and UAG that's code for the 22nd amino acid that is pyrolysine. Now, as we have drawn the structure of amino acid, you would have seen that amino acid structure, we have COOH group. I will just make it more clear for you. We have the COOH group. We have the NH3 group. And we have the R side chain. Right? We have the R side chain. So, on the basis of the nature of the R side chain, amino acids are divided into certain other categories also on the basis of their nature of their R side chain. So, the R side chain can be polar or can be non polar. So, on the basis of that, on the basis of the R side chain, amino acids are derived, uh, are classified into unpolar amino acids, unpolar side chain amino acids, polar side chain amino acids. In the polar category also, we can have charged amino acid, charged polar side chain amino acids and we can have uncharged polar amino acids. Now, we are going to discuss in detail what are our unpolar amino acids and what are our polar amino acids. So, first of all, I will take in consideration the unpolar amino acid and discuss them in detail. Alright. So, first of all, we are going to discuss about the unpolar amino acids. I hope you are clear with this abbreviation that AA is amino acids, all right. So, uh, unpolar amino acids may we have glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, phenylalanine, methionine, tryptophan and proline. Now, it was very difficult for me to write these amino acids with their full name. So, there is a single letter abbreviations for these amino acids as well. For example, when we talk about glycine, we can call it as G. When we talk about alanine, we can call it as A. When we talk about valine, we can call it as V. When we talk about leucine, we can call it as L. Isoleucine is I. But now, tell me one thing, what will we call phenylalanine? So, phenylalanine has P in the, as the first letter of the, uh, of this word, okay. Phenylalanine has the first letter of this word as P, right. But P has already been associated with proline. Now, we cannot give phenylalanine as P. Now, what the scientists did was, they actually recognize the sound what it is making phenyl alanine may the sound that is coming is f phenyl alanine so it was named as f phenyl alanine f then we talk about methionine methionine was m tryptophan on the basis of the structure of the side chain it has w w structure w kind of shape of the structure of the side chain so it was called as w and proline is p that is clear all right so this was a, this was about our unpolar amino acid and this single letter abbreviations were very are very very important when it comes to amino acids because when generally question comes the single letter abbreviations are given and not the full letter is given and there is three letter abbreviation also for example there is gly there is ala, there is val and all of that. That is also very important. But to learn the single letter abbreviations is more important. All right. Now we're going to talk about the polar amino acids. Now what are our polar amino acids? As the name suggests, polar amino acids have the side chain that is polar in nature. All right. Now what are polar amino acids? Polar amino acids have side chain that have polar in nature that means their side chain can dissolve in water can dissolve in the polar solvents right so when we talk about our polar amino acids we have polar uncharged amino acid that means their side chain cannot be ionized they have non-ionizable side chains right so we have cysteine cysteine we have serine we have threonine we have tyrosine, 
we have glutamine and we have asparagine all right so cysteine is termed as c serine is termed as s threonine as t now t has already been given to your threonine so tyrosine mein we have y ka sound is coming ty that is y so y was given to tyrosine n is given to glutamine because it has the q is given to glutamine because glutamine has a sound of q that is glutamine right so we can give it as q and asparagine asparagine mein sound is coming of n asparagine n so sound of n is coming right so we can classify the amino acids on the basis of polar amino acids also so we have cysteine serine threonine tyrosine glutamine and asparagine you can learn it as c s t y n q so this is your what this is your polar uncharged amino acids when we talk about unpolar amino acid i didn't tell you the trick that is actually gavli gavli f m w p so this is the trick for your unpolar amino acid this is for polar uncharged amino acids so this is for polar uncharged amino acids this trick is for unpolar amino acids you can say it as for like five times panch baar bolo gavli fmwp gavli fmwp you will be able to learn that these are the unpolar amino acids you can say it five times cstyy nq cstyy nq say it just five times you will just you know yaad ho jayega apne aap that these are polar uncharged amino acids now next category we have polar charged amino acid what polar charged amino acids let's discuss them polar charged amino acids so polar charged amino acids are the one for the for whom the site for whom the side chains can be ionized in water or ionized in any other solvent polar solvent right so when we talk about polar charged amino acids we have polar basic charged amino acid basic side chain they have basic side chain right and the ones that have acidic side chains so basic mein we have hrk to so hrk mein we have so let me just write them in with their names and the way we were doing it earlier right so histidine arginine and lysine histidine ka single letter abbreviation is h arginine ka arginine mein a has already been given to alanine so for arginine the single letter abbreviation will be r for lysine as we have given l already so this uh, iska single letter abbreviation will be of course k so hrk is your are the basic amino acids all right then we have our acidic amino acids in that we have aspartic acid as the name is suggesting it is acidic all right then we have glutamic acid glutamic acid so aspartic acid single letter abbreviation will be d and for glutamic acid it will be e all right so these were your basic amino acids these were your acidic amino acids so basic amino acids mein we have h r k and in the acidic amino acid mein we have d or mr d d e all right so have you learned all the amino acids with their single letter abbreviations very good now there were additions to these amino acids list this standard amino acid list there were two additions first one your selenocysteine very very important question which is generally asked in your you know like entrance examinations and in your university level in examinations about these amino acids so what is the 21st standard amino acid is your selenocysteine don't confuse it with cysteine very very important its structure resembles cysteine but it is not derived from cysteine it is derived from serine its structure has selenium instead of sulfur in cysteine the structure had actually sulfur in its structure but now in selenocysteine it has selenium in this structure instead of sulfur but it is not derived from cysteine it is derived from serine very very important so it is your 21st amino acid and it is coded by a stop codon of your genome that is u g a all right and it is present in very very important enzyme of your system for example glutathione peroxidase diiodinase etc etc 
all right now we're going to talk about 22nd amino acid 22nd amino acid is pyrolysine it is not present in humans usually but is present in other organisms all right it is it is actually coded by a stop codon only that is uag and it is a 22nd standard amino acid all right now we are going to deal with the pka values of these amino acids and how we can calculate the net charge of any amino acid at any particular ph thank you so this channel will focus on all the biochemistry related videos it will cover the whole biochemistry molecular biology and cell biology and we'll create videos and we'll give the content to you every after every 2 to 3 days all right so our next video will be about on how to calculate the net charge on any peptide at any particular ph and about the titration curves of amino acids and we'll also discuss about the speci special features of these amino acids in detail all right today was the class that was about the categories on the basis on which we divide the amino acid that was a standard and non standard amino acids and also on the basis of the nature of their side chain i hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe Thank you so much.